When we're working with financial formulas, one of the key concepts that we need to deal with is this idea of interest. Interest is the amount that is charged when you borrow money. Or it's the amount that you collect for lending money. So it can, it can go both ways. It can work against you where you have to pay extra money uh, or it can work for you where you get extra money beyond what you were initially investing. The idea of interest is uh, comes back to essentially just a reporting of percentages. Uh, our interest rate is generally given as an annual percentage rate. And as we do our calculations, we go back to this idea of just how percentages work. The, the basics of all of our finance, financial formulas come down to this idea of simple interest. With simple interest, let's take an example. Let's say that you are going to lend someone $200 for four years and they promise to pay four percent interest. So if we want to figure out how much interest they would pay, your interest would be equal to the two hundred dollars that you lent them we want 4% of that. And remember when we are finding 4% of $200, we have to multiply that by 0 0.04. If we multiply 200 times 0 0.04, we get $8. So after one year, my $200 would have gotten $8. If this loan goes on for four years, then we're going to be paying that $8 every year for four years. And the interest on that loan would be $32. Now, if you want to think about how much you're going to get back, of course, the amount that you end up with, the amount at the end, is going to be that initial $200 because they have to pay that back plus the interest. Or $200 plus $32. At the end, you would get $232 back. These uh, simple concepts here in terms of how our percentages work together to calculate the interest can be given by our simple interest finance formulas. Um, the first one for interest, the way that we usually write this is I is equal to PRT. As we go through, I would be the amount of interest that's either earned or charged. P is a financial term for what we call the principal. And essentially, this is the starting amount. So it's either how much money you are putting in savings or it's how much money you're lending out or borrowing. R is that annual percentage rate that we're given. Um, and anytime that we're dealing with a percentage in a formula, make sure that it's in decimal form. The last variable there is T and T is gonna represent the time. And it's really important here that that time is always given in years because our interest rates will be given to us as annual percentage rates. So if, for example, we did this loan and they were going to pay it back after six months, you would have to put 0.5 in for T or one half in for T because uh, that time needs to be in years, not in months to match my interest rate. So this is the interest version of the formula. We also have another version of the formula here that will give us the total amount at the end in our account. A is going to be equal to basically that starting amount, whatever the in initial principal investment was, and then we're going to add the interest on top of that. 
So depending on if you're only interested in the interest or if you're interested in the final amount altogether of the initial investment plus the interest, you're going to use one of these two formulas. Now, simple interest is the basis for everything, but to be honest, it's not really used very often. Really, the only situations that we run into would be a super casual loan type of thing. Uh, kind of like this example here, you're going to lend money to your brother or your sister or a friend, and they're going to pay you back some extra interest in terms of that. So just something casual among a couple of people. Um, the other type of situation where we run into things involving simple interest is actually in government bonds. Sometimes we call these treasury bonds. The idea of a bond is you're going to give some money to the government. They're going to use it for some good purpose. And then at the end of a certain amount of time, they're going to give you back that money and a little bit more. So really just that concept of this idea of simple interest. When we talk about a treasury bond, we have our initial investment, what we purchase it for, the amount of money you spend on the bond. And then we're going to have what we call a maturity value, which is the amount that you'll get back at the end. And of course, that end is going to be some time in years. So for example, let's say that you pick up a bond, you're going to spend $475 on it. The conditions of the bond say that we need to leave it alone for five years, and then we can come back and collect $525 when we're done. So they want $475 now, they're going to use it to build a park or something, and then we're going to, they're going to come back later and give me $525 as long as I've let it sit for that full five years. That's where that maturity value comes in. It's worked its way. It's gotten through all of the age that we need it to get through. In an example like this, notice that what we are not given is a percentage rate. You may want to know how this investment compares to other investments, in which case you really need to look at what the interest rate is to see, is this bond going to be a good way to spend my money? Or maybe do I want to put it in a savings account or a money market account or the stock market? So to do that, we need to know what the rate is. And it can we can calculate it from this formula because we have all the other pieces of information. In this case, A is the amount I end up with, which is the $525. P is the principal or starting value, which is this 475. And T is the number of years. And in this case, it's the five years that are the condition of the loan. So I can just put all of that information into my formula. So A is 525 is equal to P, which is 475, plus P again, 475 times R times T, which in this case is the five years that we have. Solving for R here isn't too bad. There's no exponents or anything weird. It's just a really fairly straightforward equation. You might want to make it a little bit simpler by going ahead and multiplying that 475 and 5 together. Remember, we can multiply things in any order. It's a nice property of multiplication. And if we do 475 times 5, we get 2,375 times R. Now I just need to get the R by itself. There's two numbers on the same side. We have to get rid of them one at a time. First, we're going to subtract 475 from each side, which is going to give me 50 on the left. And I'm still left with that 2,375 R on the right. Then I'm going to divide by that 2,375 on each side. And I'm going to be able to figure out what my R value is. So if you go to your calculator, take 50 divided by 2,375, I end up with 0 0.0211. This is my interest rate, but remember, because it came out of a formula, this is the uh, decimal version of it. So if I want to change it to a percent, times by 100 there, we end up with 2.11% is going to be my annual interest rate that's going to be earned 
by this particular treasury bond. So if you have a savings account, for example, that earns 3%, you might be more interested in putting your money in the savings account because you'll end up with more money at the end of five years. Um, if your savings account only gives you 1.5%, maybe this is going to be a better investment for you. So uh, being able to have a annual percentage rate for comparison between things is a helpful thing to do. And that's pretty straightforward as you're solving um, through using this simple interest formula. In other instances, we're going to be using different types of formulas that go beyond the idea of simple interest. And that's what we're going to talk about in the next video.